What's up guys, Bill here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a new uh, data analysis platform that I've been using the last couple of weeks, incorporating into my trading system and process. Um, and I think it's going to be very beneficial for me. And I think it can be for you too. If you follow the channel for long enough, you know I'm a big fan of TradeTix. Um, using it for about two years now, done a ton of videos on it for things like Flow, Dark Pools, Gamma, Scanners, and a bunch of other stuff. But this company, Edgeful, and their platform has a lot of interesting inf and useful information that TradingTix doesn't have. So I find it to be very complimentary. Um, a lot of platforms and things that come out have the same stuff over and over. And TradingTix has covered most of my bases for now. But I am using this and will continue to in the future for a few reasons I'm going to talk about today in this video. Um, I'm going to cover like three things that I really like about it that I've used the most. And then in the future, I'll definitely make some more videos as I further explore the platform and learn more about it, just like I did with TradingTix. Um, so let's check this out here. Um, this is the basic landing page. And we'll talk about some of the very basic functionality stuff, and then we'll dive into some of the reports. You have first here your report um, type. There's price action reports, volume reports, reports on indicators, and also an economic calendar. And then once you're in the, you know, that macro um, choice, you can go and pick the types of reports. So you can see here under price action, stuff like gap fills, green and uh, red days, uh, like streaks. Um, and when green and red days happen the most, peak troughs, performance trends, FOMC, um, intraday timing, earnings, and pre-market. A lot of great stuff. And you can pick any stock here. And you can also change the data ranges so as recently as one month or as far back as five years. And a lot of the reports have filters. You can filter this information that comes down in these tables and charts. Um, and then also you have a nice breakdown of most of these things work. It will kind of explain what this is showing and how you can maybe use it effectively. OK, and a lot of the um, pages also have uh, tutorials from the owners that you can watch to make sure you really fully understand everything. It's, uh, you know, pretty simple, pretty easy interface, uh, easy to read interface. But let's talk about a few of the aspects I like so far. OK, first is gap fills. I've done videos on gap fills um, as somebody who, you know, trades things like power earnings gaps and stuff like that and marks open gaps on my charts for support and resistance and targets on trades uses them a lot. I've always been a big fan of gap fills, but I in, you know, as a spy trader and trading spy every day, it basically gaps at least a little bit every single day. And that's something I pay close attention to. And I've always, you know, kind of known just by sitting in the screen for hours, you know, in you know, a couple of years, hours every day, that pretty much more often than not, spy gaps fill the same day they're made. Um, but I never really knew the exact percentage or if certain days were more likely to fill or if certain Gap sizes were more likely to fill, and now I can see that. Um, so looking at SPY here in the last year of gaps, we can see that just in general, a gap up fills 63% of the time on SPY and a gap down 64% of the time. All right. And in this table over here, it breaks that down for you with the exact numbers. Gap ups happened 128 times. Gap downs happened 122 times. That's about, that's 250 frequency, right? That's about how many trading days there are in a year. So basically SPY is going to gap every day, at least a little bit. Um, you can break that down by size. All right. One dot less than one dollar of gaps up fill 79% of the time and down 90% of the time. Okay. So this is where you start catching my attention. Um, I'm looking for stuff that happens at a high rate of success. I would say 70% and up is something that would have my attention. Just think of it as if you were test back testing a strategy trading strategy. Um, I would take a 70% win rate on a trading strategy with good risk management. That's going to be very profitable. So even you could even make an argument going down maybe to 65% or so, but at definitely 70% and up and the higher, the better, right? So we can see that gaps of less than a dollar get filled especially when there are gaps down a very high percentage of the time. And they happen 53 gaps up, 52 gaps down, 105 times in the last year. That's about 40% of all the gaps, right? Um, so a lot of the gaps are going to be less than a dollar. Well, let's check about 
$1 to $3. Okay, these fill a lot less of the time, right? 59% filled, you know, it's better than nothing, but it's not a great win rate in 49%, definitely not. Um, this is just general for the last year when gaps are $1 to $3. And you can see that those happen 58, 53 times, 111. So that's, you know, between the dollar gaps and the one to three, you're covering almost 90% of all your gaps, okay? Once you start getting over three bucks, it's just not even worth it. It's most likely not gonna fill, right? Okay, so let's focus on these one and one to three dollar gaps and let's check out the weekdays. This is where things can start getting interesting. Look at Mondays. Gap downs on Mondays fill 91% of the time, all right? And there were, in the last year, there's been 23 instances of that. So about 10%, well, a little over. Well, yeah, no, actually, sorry, a little less than 10% of all the trading sessions last year, there was a Monday gap down. And they filled 91% of the time. Um, that's great. You can really um, take, uh, take that into consideration and use it for your advantage. Tuesdays, no nah, real edge there. Wednesdays, Wednesdays, 71%. Of gap ups filled, that's pretty good. Um, happened 28 times in the last year. 67, not bad, not bad. Here we go, Friday. Now on Friday, unlike a lot of the other days, we have high results for both gap ups and gap downs. So that's notable. And that, this is something I posted about on Twitter on last Friday and the week before, was that on these Fridays, these gaps fill a pretty good percentage of the time. Um, and total, we had 52 of these results. That's about 20% of all the trading sessions of last year where we had Friday gap up or gap downs and 71% of those times they filled. Uh, very useful, okay? So now let's talk about how do we incorporate these things into our trading? Well, on Friday, um, I'm gonna show you how I incorporated this knowledge into my trading for SPY, all right? So here's Friday. Um, what you're going to want to make sure you do, and this is what I do on SPY every day, is I mark the previous day's closing price. So going into Monday, um, the 22nd, that's going to be our closing price. But on Thursday, we close down here. Okay. So we're going to want to mark that every day and we're going to see we gapped up. Now, of course, you can take trades saying, well, 71% of the time on Fridays, these gap ups are going to fill. I want to try to take a trade towards the direction of where the gap's going to fill. And then it's kind of up to you to decide where to enter. But, you know, if we had opened here and moved right up to all-time highs on SPY, that could have been a really great place to think about considering getting short and trying to head down to, the, to fill this gap. One thing I was watching off the open was if we could come down and fill the gap and hold this area of confluence where we have major GECs, previous day's high and a really large accumulation of dark pool down here, just under where we closed on the previous day. Getting down here, I was going to look to go long to go towards all-time highs. Now, we never filled the gap on Thursday or Friday, sorry, even though there was a 71% chance based on the last years of data that we would fill it. So this is useful to me as well. Why? Well, when Gaps go unfilled, that's a sign of either strength or weakness. If they're gaps up, sign of strength. Gaps down, sign of weakness. Unfilled gaps. We talk about that all the time. This day, price came down off, off the open, but was pretty much stuck in its opening range, and they could not get it down below the opening range low, and they couldn't fill this gap. And we knew we had a bunch of dark pool. This is an aggregate dark pool level. So there's dark pool up here. There's dark pool down here. And it's just averaged. And right here is around the average. There's a lot of dark pool. There's people protecting. Look at this big wick down in pre-market. That's late prints, um, signature prints on SPY down here at 476.80. Bulls are protecting this area. And this gives me conviction now that, man, they can't even fill that gap. And it fills 71% of the time. They can't get it done. They can't get through this dark pool of protection. I'm going to get long. And we're going to target all-time highs. And I did that Friday. 
And we got even more than that, right? What a great breakout, great trade. And you could have been in down here based off of this extra knowledge besides your technical analysis, Gex, dark pools. You now have that extra edge to know that, hey, this gap fills more often than not, but they can't get it done. That shows buyers are in control here. All right. Let's um, talk about some other things I love on this platform so far. It's earnings season again, and Edgeville has information on earnings. Next week, two of the biggest names that are going to announce earnings are Tesla and NVIDIA. All right, so when we pull up the earnings tab here, we can see that there's different range dates that you can choose from. Three days, five days, 10 days, 15 days, pre-earnings, and also post-earnings. And one thing that's interesting here, again, we're looking for like outlier numbers, big numbers, right? Well, it looks like Tesla in its previous 15 days, two earnings makes 7% move over the last year on average. Now, a year of data, it sounds like a lot, but for earnings, it's four earnings reports, right? Quarterly. Um, so you can go out to three and get 12 reports, five and get 20. Um, but what this can tell us is, you know, we can take little swings running up into earnings and uh, and have a little more conviction of it. Uh, again, all of these types of data points, you want to combine them with your TA and in, in your normal process, right? You never want to just take a trade based on one thing. I don't care what it is, whether it's a dark pool level or GEX or, or, or whatever. You want to have confluence, okay? And you want to be able to build conviction across several different reasons to take the trade. But this is just extra for me. And hey, I'll take any little extra conviction and um, confirmation of my thesis that I can get. So Tesla reports Wednesday... I believe, um, after hours. That's three days from now. We can see that Tesla in the last year has put in gain of 4% on its three days right before earnings. So Monday, you could maybe open a position if you get a good entry on your chart with your other technical analysis and have a chance to potentially make a 4% gain into earnings on Wednesday. Um, some stocks do great after earnings. Some stocks do bad after earnings. Palantir is an interesting one. Uh, look at how bad it does pre prior to earnings across all time frames: three days, five days, 10, 15. It tends to pull back into earnings and then more often than not gets more, gets its gains back or, you know, sometimes even exceeds what it lost on the uh, pre earning ramp up in the post earnings. Just knowing these little things. Um, especially if you're somebody who trades a small selection of stocks, you can really learn some new things about the stocks you trade. And if you've ever heard people talk about stocks personalities and how you got to learn the personality of the stocks, right? Yeah, sure. Um, but that often takes years of screen time and a lot of trades to start to learn the nuances of different trades, like how they respond certain times of the week or off the open versus at the close or middle of the day or certain times a year or pre-market versus, um, you know, intraday, all these types of things. This site can get you that information really quick and kind of expedite that process. You know, nothing's a supplement or, you know, substitution for screen time. But if you could speed up the process or supplement your screen time with hard data, that's always beneficial. Um, and the last thing I want to look at for now is green and red days by weekday. Let's go back to SPY. All right, so over the last year, look at this, Mondays. Um, I trade SPY every day. I've never picked up on this pattern, right? Maybe that's my fault and I'm the only idiot who hasn't figured this out. But over the last year, 76% of the time, SPY closes green on Mondays. Um, and if you remember that when we were looking at gaps on Mondays, gap downs fill 91% of the time. That kind of goes hand in hand, right? If SPY 
closes green on Monday more often than any other day over the last year. It would make sense that if it ever gaps down on a Monday, there's a good chance you're filling that gap because to close green, it's going to have to close higher than the previous day's closing price, right? Which would mean your gap got filled. That's a very interesting um, coupling of data and that's very high conviction. And now I'm super excited for Monday to maybe try to take some trades based off this. Um, you can even, you know, go back and look at SPY a little bit and look at Mondays. Um, let's see. Now, it's going to be tough because a lot of the last Mondays have been holidays. We had MLK Day, New Year's, Christmas. Um, when was the last Monday we had? The, the 18th, I think. There we go. All right. The 18th. So you can see here. Yeah, it was a green day. Close down here. We gapped up. And, you know, so I guess the the closest thing you could have maybe tried to do on this day was the uh, some type enter on some type of a pullback either towards yesterday's the previous day's high or the closing. It never came close to the closing price, but it gapped up and closed green. Um, but, you know, how I can I imagine trading that? Um, definitely paying very close attention to the previous day's closing price. Like I mentioned, I mark that every day on SPY um, and playing around that. If we're, especially if we gap below on a Monday, like let's say Monday comes on SPY and here's our big candle from, um, let me fix that closing price is not quite right. Uh, here's a big candle from Friday. Let's say that we, you know, we, we gap down a little bit and it's kind of a pullback and consolidation day. Um, 480 looking for calls off a pullback to this previous all time highs, looking for a bounce to potentially fill that gap, right? We know the gap down on Mondays fill 91% of the time and we close green higher. I mean, that's a, that could be a great trade, right? Um, I would normally expect after a big candle like that, some type of consolidation and maybe not new highs, but if the market wants to catch people off guard, one of the best things they could do is just keep it going, keep closing higher and higher next week. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's just an introduction, like three of my favorite aspects of the platform so far. There's a lot more stuff to choose from, and I'm going to make some videos in the future with some more tips and things I've learned and things I'm utilizing off the site. But hopefully that helps. If you want to check it out, there's a link down in the description to check the site out. And if you have any questions about it or anything like that, just leave a comment or find me on Twitter and I'll help you out.